I'm on set at the hut where we filmed the blacksmith and this is several weeks after we finished filming the last scene. So it's good to come back and just have a look and make sure everything's cleaned and how it was before we started to film, uh, which we've done. So um, yeah, sitting here reflecting and thinking about the last 12 months of filming. Um, mainly thinking about how much work it was in the last 12 months of filming. Um, but very rewarding to have finished the film. Some eagles never be defeated. They can be kept out. You know, this was, this was a film that uh, could have quite easily been made with a big budget, with lots of CGI. But the reality of independent filmmaking is that we don't have that type of money. So what that's generally replaced with is a crew that becomes very creative in the way it films things. And we very much had to do that with The Blacksmith. And it's a very atmospheric film uh, where we relied heavily on, on lighting and different times of the day and night to tell a story. The wind, when it blows, it's like there's something on the wind. Um, the Blacksmith is a story that combines two periods together. Um, we start the story back in the 1840s um, and the original story centres around a blacksmith, uh, Samuel Bell, and some events that occur in the 1840s um, where his daughter disappears. And basically the blacksmith workshop and, and the hut that we're in today um, is locked down for 180 years until eventually it's sold to a couple from the city, so Ella and, and Jess. Um, and Jess is an ex-police officer and he suffered from PTSD and was actually pensioned out of, out of the police force. Um, Ella, his wife, um, was an academic, very successful in her chosen career, um, decides to give it all away and moved to the country to try and help Jess recover from the trauma that he experienced as a police officer. You have to remember, Jess, you can't save everyone. The blacksmith workshop is still standing. Um, so Jess has always wanted to turn his hand to blacksmithing. So it seems like an ideal setup for them. A little bit out of town, a uh, beautiful old hut, beautiful countryside, and an old blacksmith's workshop as they settle into their new life, some very strange things start to occur and, and it's quite evident that uh, Jess um, still has a lot of mental issues from his PTSD that he's trying to overcome and Ella um, is doing her best to support him to overcome those. Um, I don't want to give too much of the story away because that will be a big spoiler alert. It's okay. Well, if it's not okay, what then? We just run away somewhere else? Being an independent filmmaker and having very little budget or next to no budget, um, we relied on a little bit of funding that we received through a crowd surfing um, site. Um, we also had some, some very, very good acting. Um, a lot of improvisation due to, to the locations that we filmed, uh, you know, the very hot summer days, the freezing cold winter nights. Um, and that's what I think we've produced, is that uh, independent atmospheric film. Um, but I think, I think the film is, is very enjoyable. It can be intense at times, um, but um, it's an interesting story. And, um, you know, the flashbacks from the modern day to, to the 1840s, had a particularly interesting element to the story and we've done our best to bring those two time periods together and you know tell the original story and how that original story has crept into the modern day. Personally I think the best part of the film um, is the last couple of scenes um, and, and, and hopefully the last scene, nobody sees that coming. That's what I've tried to write into the script. So, love to see you at the premiere. Come along and, 
and uh, help us celebrate uh, independent filmmaking and, and you know, on behalf of the cast and crew, we really hope that you enjoy the film. There was a lot of effort that went into it um, and I think it's, it's uh, an enjoyable, entertaining film.